We're driving our Ford Bronco Sasquatch package with the 2.3 liter engine that we bought in August of 2021. Not too long after we bought our Bronco, we did a video going through all of the issues we'd had. Now, a year later with almost 18,000 miles, we're ready to give you an update. And yes, since our last video about the Bronco, we have made a few changes. That grill is now iconic silver. We've painted the trail sides white and we've added some very attractive orange accents. All right. Here's every issue we've had with our Bronco and whether or not it's been fixed. Issue one, when we first got our Bronco, it had made this whistling noise when you would drive at higher speeds. Ford issued a technical service bulletin for certain early builds and ours was one of them. So they installed a redesigned hood seal, problem solved. Is that just a fancy word so they don't have to say recall? Maybe. <laughs> problem solved. <laughs> So this is just annoying aesthetically. When we first got our Bronco, the keypad on the door was crooked. So what I did is I removed it and then I reinstalled it underneath the fuel lid. It works great in that position. It fits perfectly. And uh, everybody, when I uh, did the video uh, talking about how to install it, people were like, your car's gonna blow up. It's been more than a year now, hasn't blown up yet. <laughs> Problem fixed. Sweetie, do you have a problem with too much friction? <laughs> I'm not sure how to answer that, but I'm gonna redirect uh, to an issue we had with our Bronco, which is that when we would put the soft top down, not to the midway position, but all the way back, the soft top mechanism would sometimes rub on the roll bar rails, and the easy solution was to install a really simple film, and it's so far done a pretty good job protecting those roll bars. Additionally, on our video talking about six cheap Bronco mods, we talked about installing the IAG Easy Soft Top Lift Assist system, and with that system installed, it actually makes it much easier to get the soft top up. You don't have to push laterally on it, so scrapes are even lessened. So I'm gonna say that that problem is solved, though it took the aftermarket to solve it. All right, here's one that makes me mad. Sometimes the speaker down here by my left foot would buzz, and I wanted to give uh, the dealership that we were going to that's closest to us a chance to fix it, and they're like, ooh, we can't replicate it. So as soon as I got the Bronco home, I took 30 seconds, took the speaker grate off, and uh, I saw that there was some tape left on there from the factory. I removed that, and I removed that dealership from our um, list of contacts. And it was fixed, that's right, kiddo. Evie, tell them all about the issue we had with our backup camera. It was also an intermittent problem, and whenever I would put it in reverse, the camera would look all glitchy and the colors were wrong, and I could not see what was happening. It was very frustrating. We also ran that issue by the first dealership that we went to uh, down in San Bernardino, and they also couldn't replicate it, and that's where they left it. Oh, we're not sure. To me, that is a safety issue. If we were to move it up the flagpole to Ford, I bet they would be interested in. Nonetheless, we didn't have to do that because we found another dealership over in Redlands uh, here in California, and they said, we're gonna have to take it in, uh, bring the car in here for a couple days so we can investigate, uh, but they did. Figured out they uh, needed to swap the camera unit, and then it solved the problem. Huh. And, and remind me, sweetie, how long did they have the Bronco? I dropped it off on a Monday and it was ready by end of day Wednesday to pick up. Well done, Ken Grody Ford and Redlands. You've made us happy. You can see me quietly seething about the other dealership just underneath the surface. <laughs> Sorry, sweetie. Uh, I don't know. We're only at the car dealership. What can we do about it? This does lead to a big point about the Bronco ownership experience, which is that the dealer really has a, a positive or negative effect on how we feel about the overall experience. So we bought um, originally in Cerritos. Good vibes. Indeed, Norm Reeves Ford in Cerritos was awesome. They sold us our Bronco at MSRP. They were extremely responsive to inquiries. Just a wonderful experience. The dealership in San Bernardino, <sighs> Is craptastic a word? I don't know, has that made it into the Urban Dictionary yet? It sounds too positive. <laughs> yeah, because it's got the tastic in Celebratory. it. Celebratory. About the lowest effort you could put into addressing customer concerns. Uh, no Wi-Fi, uh, so I had to like go to a Starbucks when I was waiting for work to be done. It was just kind of a bad experience. By contrast, going to Ken Grody Ford in Redlands was an amazing experience. I took the vehicle in for a 15,000 mile service and somebody met me there when I arrived and they told me where to go and they were super communicative 
and uh, getting the thing scheduled to go in for that rear camera fix was super easy. That said, the markup they have on uh, new Broncos is insane. So I don't know if I'd buy there, uh, at least not with my budget, but uh, I would certainly get my vehicle serviced there and they definitely uh, treated us well for all of our repairs and service concerns. The big lesson, if you're gonna buy a Bronco, find a Ford dealer that you trust because the quality varies a lot. One other weird, like esoteric issue that uh, popped up when we first got our Bronco is that there was some uh, inclination for the vehicle to kind of continue steering and not really return to center from left turns. And I wasn't sure if that was a suspension issue or a tire issue, but as we've moved through tires, it's become clear that that really was a tire issue. Which leads to one other issue we've had with our Bronco, which is that the stock Goodyears have a nasty habit of being damaged by getting slashed between the tread blocks, as indicated by the very first thing that happened in our Sarah Gordo off-road video. It should be a good day. Unless it's not, in which case we will have done a hard cut to when things went wrong. <laughs> We've had a lot of tire damage. Most recently, you had an experience like that. Oh yeah, I was making a U-turn and it wasn't even that big of a rock. I shouldn't have run over a rock. It was like this big, but like there was air gushing out of it rapidly. I couldn't make it home. It was crazy. Yes, and uh, I appreciate you owning up to hitting a rock, but if there is a vehicle, you should be able to drive <laughs> over a rock. I Perhaps thought we were a cool, man. A Bronco Sasquatch <laughs> might be one of them. <laughs> We've actually replaced, oh gosh, we've got two or three tires now, um, just from uh, random bits of damage. And that inspired me to do a little bit of investigation. Um, I've heard so many of my colleagues in the automotive journalism fields talk about the uh, BFG KO2 tires. And uh, my buddy, Jeff Glucker from Hooniverse, he's like, uh, why don't you uh, get in contact with them? Maybe they'll send you some tires. So I did, and they did. So what we're going to do is we're gonna do a comparison with the stock tires and the BFG KO2s. We haven't installed them yet, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna compare noise, ride quality, we're gonna see if it has an effect on fuel economy, and we're gonna do all of that baseline test with the tires that are on here now. And then in future video, we're gonna talk about what our KO2 tire experience is like. We'll do some off-road driving up here in the mountains and just see how we like it. And who knows, maybe, uh, none of the tires will get slashed and then uh, that'll be kind of a cool thing. We got a good tire guy, but I don't want to see him that frequently. <laughs> With all of our personal issues on the way, we should talk about more general Bronco issues. Here's just a fun visual of all the recalls. When you see the uh, recall in there for the backup camera, what's interesting is that is a completely different issue where the backup image may remain on screen after you uh, shift out of reverse. Completely mm. different than the one we had. And then there's another issue that we did have to get a check for, which is the rear child lock system and uh, they inspected our vehicle uh, when we were having the camera repaired and uh, our vehicle's just fine. Going further, there is a customer satisfaction program. You spell that R E C A L L. It's not a recall, but it feels <laughs> like it for a uh, front drive shaft issue where people have had the drive shaft just like fail. We've been very lucky not to have that issue. Yeah, that doesn't affect our Bronco as far as I'm aware. I have checked, but uh, we feel bad for folks who have had that issue. Uh, and the same thing with uh, catastrophic engine failures with the V6. We went with the four cylinder and so far it's perfectly fine for our needs. Um, so I feel bad for folks who got Broncos uh, and are having V6 problems. Wrapping up, I've got a question. Based on our experience, would you hesitate to buy a Ford Bronco? Tell us in the comments. To my mind, every vehicle has issues and the, the real crux of it is, are those issues abundant and are they solvable? And so far, they, to me, haven't felt excessively abundant, especially for a first year vehicle, and they've all been solved. Right now, we have a problem-free Bronco, um, especially once we get those KO2 tires on it. So um, I'm feeling really good about the ownership experience. Any thoughts? Based on our experience, I. I'm having positive feelings about being a Bronco owner. I think we've been lucky not to have some of the more serious issues with the Bronco. Those would give me pause. Maybe in year two, the uh, Bronco will fall apart as foretold in the comment section on YouTube. And if it does, we'll make a video about it. If you'd like to follow along with our Bronco journeys, be sure to subscribe. And be sure to subscribe if you'd like to see what we do normally, which is review cars as a family, plus have the occasional helicopter adventure. Family, we've survived more than a year of Bronco ownership. May I have a five and a five? And you can get your high five. Ah! <laughs>